Hi guys, I'm back with another video um, and I want to follow up on the video that I made about the victimhood um, crutch. I have been, I've seen a lot about the Israeli Gaza war and I know that this is a very, very touchy subject and people have very, very strong feelings. But I'm going to go a step further than what I've heard. Um, number one, when I heard the, I, I, I was probably the first person in my circle of friends and family to hear about this. And I remember sending out a text message to some of my family members and friends saying, I think it said something like full blown war in Israel or in the Middle East. I think I said, Joe Biden has broke the whole world. <laughs> and someone sent back a text and said, in record time. Um, and I remember watching it play out and just horrified at what I heard. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give not only what I first thought, my first impressions, what I've thought since then, but also what my premonitions are telling me because I'm just kind of, you know, go with me guys. I am completely flying blind here and I'm just putting out the videos as they're given to me to do. I'm not worrying about makeup, hair, how I look. I'm just putting the information out there. So, um, that the first thing that I heard was every single channel that was covering this, they called it a surprise attack. And it reminded me of a more recent conflict where it was like an unprovoked invasion. And it had to be said that way. A surprise attack, an unprovoked. And I think I posted on social media that I believe that it was as much a surprise as the Ukraine was war was unprovoked. Um, whether you agree or disagree, there certainly was a pretext that was well articulated for this is what's going to happen if this continues to happen. So I remember thinking, why does everybody got to remind us and enforce upon us that it was a surprise? Just from what I know about security in Israel, I remember a long time ago, someone telling me that had been there, that they did profiling at their airport and they didn't really care what anyone thought about it. I don't know if that's true or not. So if someone in the comments knows, and the, you know, when I say years ago, I mean like 20 years ago, um, they said they will profile you at their airports and they don't care um, what people think about it or how they think it quote unquote looks to do that. This is what they're going to do because they want to keep their self safe. Um, and I, no one will ever convince me. Okay. No one will ever convince me that this was a surprise. Now, I don't have any information on why something like this would be allowed. Um, I've heard different things, you know, a pretext. Well, wow, that, you know, we know anybody who trusts any government, it's weird to me. It's so weird to me how people will find out a government is lying about something and then be angry about it. But then the next time the government tells them something, they don't have this sort of instantaneous, yeah, sure, whatever you say, you know, I were, you know, I don't believe you. I remember, you know, all the way back, I knew at the time that the weapons of mass destruction story was a lie. I don't know how I knew, but I knew. Similarly, I remember watching when John Roberts was confirmed to the Supreme Court and I knew, and I said, these are things that I said out loud at the time. So it wasn't like a surprise. Um, anyone, John Roy, he will not be the, the Supreme Court justice that people think he will be. Um, and turns out that he's been one of the bigger disappointments, I think for a lot of people. And at the time, I think I might've even been liberal. I, you know, I, I think, um, because this was before Obama. So, you know, different things like that. I also said that Casey Anthony would get off, but anyway, I digress. Um, so I didn't believe it was a surprise. And I, I, I don't, I'm not an expert on this region. Okay. I'm not an expert on the history. Um, but I want to talk about the victimhood mentality. 
no matter where you stand on this issue, I think you have to know that the people who were behind it, and I'm assuming it's, I'm not even going to assume it's Hamas. You know what? I'm not even going to assume that. But for the sake of this conversation, I'm going to just say, let's say it's Hamas that was responsible for it with their other sort of demon spawn, if you want to call them that, or surrogates or whatever the case may be, part of the I, the resistance or the freedom fighters in that area, um, that they were behind this. Didn't they know or expect that it would lead to indiscriminate collective punishment, as you call it? Didn't they know that? Because after all, they think that these are their brutal enslavers. So do you not think that if you go in and do something like what happened on October 7th, that these brutal slavers that you're resisting, you know, use the language, um, that they're going to do exactly what they did? So if you believe that, then were these people sacrificed? by their own. Ooh. And if they were sacrificed, then doesn't it make sense that Israel will want to destroy them? I'm not assuming that any of my information is correct. I'm just saying, if you've got an organization, a group that is so evil that they are willing to sacrifice tens of thousands of their own people or more, because if you say that they're as brutal as, I, and I don't know anything about this, I, you know, I'm giving the information based on what I've heard and I'm trying to connect dots in a way that makes sense. It's actually not working. Okay. Um, if they are as bad as you say, then you had to expect that they would come in and do exactly what they did or worse. And just based on the information that I've been told, I would say that it actually probably would be a lot worse if there wasn't such an international pushback and outcry. Yes, no, maybe. And again, I'm, 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 I'm giving a hypotheticals based on the information that I've received because I'm not there and I actually know nothing and I don't believe anything. And when I say nothing, you would be surprised at some of the things that I don't accept, but I don't talk about it because I don't have any evidence or proof one way or the other. If you guys want me, it, it, it might offend a lot of people if I were to talk about it because I don't assume that anything that I'm told after 9-11, y'all, come on. I don't assume that anything that I'm told has to be true. So I'm doing it based on the information that I have. If they were sacrificed, then you would say that the people in Palestine or in Gaza, sorry, people in Gaza and uh, Palestine, whatever you want to call it, that they knew that they were going to be sacrificed and I'm not excusing any of it. So don't, don't, you know, twist my words. I'm giving you a hypothetical based on the information that we have challenge my information. If it's wrong and tell me why my conclusion is wrong. I really want to hear that, but I'm not taking a side or justifying anything. Again, I think that war is something that is inflicted upon ordinary people by elites at the top on both sides. So I want to make sure that I'm clear about that. So they had to know that what they were doing was sacrificing the people that they were saying that they're there to liberate. And if there was a percentage that they were willing to sacrifice, how many? I'm told that the number at this point is 40,000 people that have died. Now, I don't hear any information on what number of those were combatants. Um, and 
to say that it doesn't really matter, I'm not going to say it does or it doesn't matter one way or the other. I'll let everyone decide. But I do think that maybe they don't know. I do think that it's important um, for the purposes of this hypothetical. Just because, and you tell me, I don't know. So anybody can tell me if they really do have 10 year old combatants, um, how should that be handled? If they really have 10 year old combatants, female combatants, and I don't know that they do. These are just some of the things that I've heard. Maybe none of that's true. I'm not there. And anyone who's not there, you know, I don't know. Um, if those people are combatants, should they be killed in war or no? I don't want to see death and destruction. I believe that when you have wars, I believe that this gives energy to Satan. And so for that reason, I am against it. I think all of that death and suffering gives energy to Satan. I'm always against that. But we have to deal with the realities that we have. And um, at least to the extent that we know what the reality is. So we don't know how many of the people that died were combatants versus how many were purely civilian. But one of the things that I heard, and we're talking about the saddling people with the victim crutch, okay, and what they will tolerate. If they were sacrificed by their own, like black people were sold by their own into slavery, okay, and I'm sure not only black people, um, if they were sacrificed by their own, um, how does that change this entire picture just from a purely, you know, I'm anti-war, but from a purely from pure analysis of this particular conflict. Now, one of the things that I've heard um, about this horrible, horrible war is that they destroyed all of the universities. Well, how many were there? Who were the professors there? They destroyed hospitals. Well, how many were there? Who were the doctors and nurses and medical professionals that were there? Where were they educated? Were they Palestinian? Were they slaves? In an open air prison? I'm not, just because a country has a lot of poverty doesn't necessarily mean that they're oppressed. However, it almost always means that they think they are. If they didn't think that there was some boot on their neck stopping them from being able to do what they needed to do to succeed, then they would do it. That's human nature. The only reason that any of these things were able to happen, the poverty, all of the problems that I'm told are there. And I don't, you know, I'm not, like I said, I'm not there. So I don't assume anything is true, but I'm making a hypothetical based on what I've told, been told that they think they're being oppressed. And if I'm wrong, if the universities there were not for Palestinians, if the universities in Gaza were not for Palestinians, who were they for? Who attended? Who taught there? If the hospitals in Gaza were not staffed with Palestinian doctors, Palestinian nurses. At one point, somebody told me that the doctors were Hamas. I don't really even know what to make of that. I mean, you know, I don't even really care about that. If someone is a healer and not a killer, I, I I find it hard to believe that someone would be a doctor and a killer. I mean, unless they're, you know, got problems. But generally speaking, I don't think that most doctors set out to kill people or take life. They're there to save life, even if they're misguided. So, um, you know, I, I the one of the biggest oxymorons that I heard during this conflict was that there were people in the hospital trying to help people and that 
meant that it proved that they were Hamas. I actually think that that's absurd, but I digress. Um, so by teaching them that they're victims, that they're oppressed by their neighbors, you set them up to support an organization that would ultimately end up sacrificing them to their enemy. Something that could never happen had they not been saddled with the victim crutch. So in my view, this is evil from within. Regard, you know, just because, it, let's take sex trafficking. Just because the person who bought someone for that purpose is bad does not alleviate the wickedness of the person who sold them for those purposes. They're both bad. Right? So there has to be some recognition of that. Now, before I end this video, I just want to say something and I, I don't really know what to call it, but my impression or even premonition of what happened on October the 7th. Number one, it was allowed to happen. Number two, the people who were involved in perpetrating that or at the top did not believe that they would be able to go that far. They thought they would be stopped before as much bad happened as it did. And number three, some of the people that they had gotten to get involved in this kind of attack, they had no control over them. Some of them were probably sick, twisted people. I imagine that there's a lot of people who were not willing to get involved in something like that, even if they were part of the resistance. I don't know this to be true. This is just a premonition that I have about that situation. There is no reason for Hamas to have thought that they would be able to get away with this. Not to the extent that they did. For many hours, my understanding is this went on. Even if they thought they could pull off the initial breach, no reason for them to have thought or expected that they would be able to occupy for hours, go from house to house. No reason for them to have believed that. So I do believe that there was some kind of setup from both sides and I can't wait till we finally get the truth. And for me personally, I will accept nothing less. And I will continue to ask difficult questions until we have the full truth and we have the answer. And in my next video, I'm going to get back to American victimhood because it's gone out of control. If you're not a member or if you don't claim your membership in a victim group, you will be oppressed. And that's absurd. Um, look forward to talking to you in the comments about this video and my take on this. Um, I'm going to have to really come up with a very interesting title for this video because I want people to see it. And I really want to have a conversation about it because it's not a conversation that I personally have seen had so far. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.